It was only about 100 years ago that we believed our galaxy was the entire universe. Now, since that time, we've expanded our horizons considerably, discovering virtually endless galaxies filled with innumerable stars. But an even more recent phenomena is the discovery of exoplanets, planets that orbit a star that isn't our own sun. These alien worlds have long been hypothesized to exist. After all, it's only logical that other stars would have planets just like our solar system. But the first confirmation of one didn't come until 1992. And things have absolutely snowballed since then, as we've come across potentially Earth-like planets, planets much larger than Jupiter, and many, many more. Currently, there are more than 5,300 confirmed exoplanets, and among them are some truly bizarre worlds that might just blow your mind. If you were on a spaceship approaching the catchily named HD 189773b, the planet would look incredibly blue, laced with swirling clouds. At first glance, you might think it's an Earth-like exoplanet, perhaps covered in water, perhaps home to life. But the moment you got a bit closer, you'd realize just how wrong all of that was. First of all, unlike our rocky Earth, this planet is a huge gas giant. And with a mass of 16% greater than Jupiter and a radius 14% greater, it's classified as a hot Jupiter, orbiting so close to its parent star and moving so quickly that an entire year on the planet would only be about 52 hours. The planet is blue not because of massive oceans like Earth, but because of silicate particles in the clouds making up its atmosphere. But what really distinguishes it from Earth is the weather. All across the surface, winds rage at 1.5 miles per second, or 2.4 kilometers per second. What's even scarier is that the wind carries shards of hot glass. Yep, it is perpetually raining molten glass sideways on this planet. The planet is also tidally locked, meaning that one side always faces the sun and the other is stuck in eternal night. The deadly alien world, 64 light years away, was discovered by French astronomers in 2005 while observing stars in the Vulpecula constellation. They used a technique called Doppler spectroscopy, uh, which measures changes in a star's radial velocity as a planet revolves around it. But when such changes in speed are noticed, astronomers can then investigate further and confirm the exoplanet's existence with more detailed observations of the host star. Since its discovery, it's been the subject of intense atmospheric research, which has uncovered some interesting details. For starters, there appears to be water vapor present in the atmosphere, along with methane, carbon dioxide, and carbon monoxide. So it seems that there are some building blocks of life, but the hellish weather and the blistering temperatures make any prospect of life well, pretty much impossible. It was also the first exoplanet to be mapped, not a super detailed map of the planet's surface, but rather a temperature map. NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope was able to track and measure the planet for 33 consecutive hours in 2007. And what they found was that though the dark side of the planet receives no sunlight, it is still incredibly hot, coming in at around 650 degrees Celsius or 1200 degrees Fahrenheit, while on the sunlight side, you can expect to cook at around 930 degrees Celsius or 1700 Fahrenheit. This is because the intense winds carry the heat around to the dark side of the planet. TOI-849b is yet another catchily named world that you definitely not want to live on. But unlike the previous exoplanet, this one's danger doesn't come from its atmosphere, but rather from the complete lack of atmosphere. Despite being a tad smaller than Neptune, the only thing remaining of this gas giant is its mysterious core, as the rest of its gas was likely stripped off and evaporated by its parent star. What remains is likely iron, rock, and water, with a little bit of hydrogen and helium mixed in for good measure. Essentially, it is the dead core of what was a likely once a much more massive gaseous planet. This exoplanet was discovered using the transit method, which basically looks for a slight dimming of a star as a planet passes in front of it, blocking some of the light from our perspective. When looking at a long-term graph of the light received from a star, the orbit of an exoplanet will be visible in these regular, predictable dimming periods. It's quite a useful trick, but it only works when exoplanets pass between their star and our planet. So the reason that this host star destroyed its planet's atmosphere all comes down to distance. It orbits 
incredibly close to its star and has an orbital period of just 18 hours. Such extreme proximity would make any atmosphere easy pickings for a hot star, evaporating it away in no time. But this isn't the only possible explanation for the formation of this odd world. The other main theory is that it is a failed gas giant, having never formed an atmosphere in the first place. All of this has captured the attention of astronomers, as understanding how this planet formed could give us an insight into the histories of the gas giants of our own solar system, like Jupiter, and potentially give us a sneak peek at their elusive cause. And that's one of the big reasons exoplanets are so important. They allow astronomers to access data about more planets than ever before, and as we only have eight in our own solar neighborhood, well, nine if you want to include Pluto, we won't tell anybody. Regardless, you definitely don't want to go to this planet. Its surface temperature is an average of 1500 degrees Celsius, or about 2800 degrees Fahrenheit. If you thought that last exoplanet was scorching hot, allow us to introduce you to Kelt 9b, discovered in 2016 by the Kilo Degree Extremely Little Telescope using the transit method. Kelt 9b is yet another hot Jupiter, and if you're starting to think that these closely orbiting gas giants are extremely common around the universe, you're probably right, but there is a bit of a sampling bias as they're also the easiest planets to detect thanks to their size, so naturally we found more of them. But Kelt 9b sets itself apart from its peers in a few ways. First of all, it's quite large, having nearly three times the mass of Jupiter while being twice as large. It's also ten times closer to its host star than Mercury is to our Sun, and completes its orbit every 36 hours. But what's insane is its surface temperature, which averages 4,400 degrees Celsius or nearly 8,000 degrees Fahrenheit, making it the hottest known exoplanet to date. However, there are some layers in the atmosphere which may potentially reach double this temperature due to the ionization of heavier atoms on the sunlight side of the planet. It's so stupid hot that many molecules are ripped into their constituent atoms when facing the star, only able to reform again when they are blown around to the dark side of the planet and cool down. There's processes like these that partially account for a surprising discovery in 2021 that its atmosphere contains traces of titanium, oxygen, and ionized iron. So we've covered a few gas giants already, but what about the more down-to-Earth planets. The first terrestrial exoplanet to be discovered was Kepler-10b, about 560 light-years away from us. Also spotted using the transit method, there was a lot of excitement surrounding its discovery as astronomers wondered just how Earth-like it might be. Despite it indeed being a rocky planet, the hope that it was remotely Earth-like vanished, well, pretty quickly, as it was soon discovered to be orbiting more than 20 times closer to its star than Mercury is to our Sun. At the same time, it's about one and a half times bigger than Earth, putting it in the class of exoplanets known as super-Earths. Kepler-10b is also tidally locked, essentially turning one side into a perpetual oven. Temperatures on the starlit side average about 1,560 degrees Celsius, or 2,840 Fahrenheit, which is uh, hot enough to melt iron. This means that at least half of the planet's surface is perpetually covered in oceans of molten rock and metal, uh, which cool as they flow onto the dark side of the planet. On some planets, droplets of molten iron can be carried into the atmosphere to later rain down, but this doesn't actually happen on Kepler-10b, as the atmosphere has already been stripped away by its host star. So, instead of iron rain, stellar winds from the sun blast these droplets off into space, potentially creating a small tail behind the planet as it orbits, much like a comet. This isn't the only lava world that we found, though, and there are several other candidates, like the similarly sized Corot 7b and Kepler 78b. The last one is actually one of the most similar exoplanets to Earth in terms of mass and size, but unfortunately it orbits its star more than 40 times closer than Mercury, turning it into yet another molten inferno hellscape. As brutal as these lava worlds might sound, they could be a welcome sight if you spent too much time on what is known as a rogue planet. Rogue planets are planets without a parent star. They likely formed just as every other planet does, but for one reason or another, they ended up being ejected from the solar system and are no longer gravitationally bound to any stars. And these evicted little guys are way more common than you might think, with conservative estimates claiming that for every star in the galaxy, there are at least two rogue planets. But some estimates are even higher, much higher in fact, such as one that placed the number at 100,000 times more than the number of stars in the galaxy, but this is 
likely way over the mark. Because rogue planets don't have a nearby star, they would be extremely cold. For some, this might mean being perpetually frozen and having little chance of life, but some studies have shown that it is actually possible for these planets to maintain an atmosphere, especially if they were ejected from their solar system early in their formation. According to some planetary scientists, such as David John Stevenson at the California Institute of Technology, if such an atmosphere can remain and the planet remains geologically stable, then it is possible to maintain liquid water on the surface. Continuing down this path, it's entirely possible for life to survive in such an environment, especially if hydrothermal vents form at the bottom of these alien oceans. What's also crazy is that around 5% of Earth-sized rogue planets would manage to keep a moon the size of ours even while being ejected. Such a moon would add to the geologic activity of the planet, making the previous scenario all the more plausible. There's even a candidate for such a rogue planet exomoon. <laughs> which is named MOA 2011 BLG 262. <laughs> but its existence oh, will be difficult to confirm. It's possible, however, that the majority of these interstellar wanderers are not Earth-like planets at all and are instead mostly gas giants, failed dwarf stars that never quite reach the critical mass needed to begin nuclear fusion and become a fully-fledged star. So far, most of the rogue planets we've spotted are indeed gas giants, and some astronomers are pushing for them to be known as sub-brown dwarfs. One of the strangest of these is OTS-44, a free-floating gas giant about 10 times bigger than Jupiter but surrounded by a massive disk of dust and rock. If this rogue planet gains enough mass, astronomers predict that it could one day form into a star and the clouds of dust around it could even coalesce into its very own planetary system.